Welcome everyone, Kostini here with another comparison video between Warhammer 2 and Warhammer 3. I already talked about ranged, and the point of that video was to showcase how ranged can be far more effective in Warhammer 2 than 3. Because they can shoot in situations in Warhammer 2 that they can't shoot in 3. And that, by the way, is very important when you're talking about handgunner units, when you're talking about flamethrowers, when you're talking about gunpowder units. Not just archer units, because at least archer units can arc, arc, arc their shots in 3, though they do it far less frequently. At least that's what I noticed. Anyway, um, in this case, I want to show infantry and I want to show cavalry. So we're going to start with uh, cavalry versus infantry test, the cycle charging situation. I have a unit of Knights of the Realm against a unit of Warriors of Chaos, regular Warriors of Chaos. Now, this is a fight where if I just do a stand-up uh, straight fight, I charge into them and I stay in fight, I will lose because Warriors of Chaos heavily armored and, well, Knights of the Realm just don't have that capability. Knights of the Realm are more of an anti-cav unit in both games. And obviously they're good at uh, chasing down lightly armored foes, but not so much against, well, Warriors of Chaos. Uh, in both cases it is on normal difficulty. So, okay, we are engaged and let's just break off. Now, this, this is important. When you're talking about cycle charging, the real question that you're asking yourself is, can my units break out from, uh, from the fight? also killed their general there, so that will give me a fairly significant advantage. Now, I have some units there engaged in the fight where I had, but I was still able to cycle charge back in quite effectively. Now, that's actually an important bit, because if you can cycle charge even when one of your units is still in there, though I think it's, it might be because he died. But I'm not really penetrating that deep in their ranks. Now that's actually good because um, if you get your units stuck in too deep, then you'll encounter the issue where um, you'll encounter the issue where you aren't able to charge. It is a behavior with regards uh, to Cav, where it's like if they have models of units and they AI, the total war AI being the total war AI running around with their units instead of just, you know, bracing for impact. And yeah, running around, their formation being disrupted. Not really the way you want to deal with cavalry, that's what I'm certain. Okay, so let's in enable the lance formation. And then pull back. But it is, by the way, a fairly close fight as it should be, I might add, because these units are of the same value. Like, I'm literally having to cycle charge in order to make this work. So I still have a unit there. And still my guys are able to charge in relatively effectively there. And do a lot of damage. Also, you gotta keep in mind that there is, there are of course balance changes between Warhammer 3 and Warhammer 2. So right here, I am just pulling all of my guys out and doing another cycle charge. Okay, we broke through completely there. Since we broke through completely, let me just get my guys out of there. Okay, not gonna work there. Had uh, just too many models and yep that didn't work out all right let's try again boom it's almost one i might add ai being ai okay too slow just don't have the Time to get the charge in. Okay, there we go. Uh, there is a mod I'm using for this, and that's the ability of picking any unit uh, as the lord of an army for the sake of battle testing. 
And yep, it's over. That was Warhammer 2. Let's see Warhammer uh, 3. The first, let's take a look at the post battle situation. So I did 8,000 damage, they did 5,000 damage, 78 kills versus 37. Okay, so Warhammer 3, same map, same situation, same units. Though, of course, different balancing between the two games. So, Knights of the Realm versus Warriors of Chaos, Chaos Warriors. Normal difficulty as well in both cases. So here come the Knights of the Realm. And let's see that charge go in. Well, the AI is certainly stupid. So we penetrated deep in the ranks. Well, that's because they didn't get the charge the reflection situation. Got the charge back in. And now we're deep in it. <laughs> gonna want to go out of here as quickly as possible because if I try and charge right here it won't work so deeper rank penetration is not necessarily what you're looking for though to be honest I blame the AI for this yep charge didn't work there now to be fair I've already won the battle on the very first charge there So the impact of just one charge is greater in Warhammer 3 than it is in Warhammer uh, 2. The problem is that extricating your guys out after a charge in Warhammer 3 can be a bit of an interesting situation. So like here it's like if I like if I try and charge with these units like when there's models like it's easier to get my models stuck in with both a regular charge though again different situation in the sense that like different stats different bonuses so the form then the lance formation actually does work it's the question of mass really and how it is affected I think between the two Okay, that was a bad move, just miscalculated. Okay. Also, the AI just fucking up. I didn't want to set it to very hard because uh, just, you know, benefits that... Well, that was certainly faster, less effort than two. Though also... Yep, so we did uh, about the same damage in both cases, though the way it behaves is differently. But really the main factor I would say there is like AI fucking up. <laughs> like instead of bracing for the charge, taking a head on, they just kind of like rush towards me. They were, they were the defender in both cases. Um, so more impactful er, uh, initial charge, but harder to kind of get your guys out of there. Like, once you dive in deep, I mean, it is an issue getting your guys out of there in both games, but, like, in, it's the the mass change that they they have, really, in Warhammer 3 vs. 2. Okay, so that was the case of Cavalry vs. Um, cavalry vs. Um, infantry. Now let's take a look at Infantry vs. Infantry. Okay, so infantry versus infantry situation. I've got a unit of great swords versus a unit of chaos warriors with great weapons. Same map as before. And we're just gonna charge in right ahead. Warriors of Chaos are on the defense. Let's see what ends up happening. Of course, being able to charge is going to give me an advantage, so I may not necessarily win with this one. Oh, here they go. Well, 
What's really important here is like, not who wins, but like animation, cohesion of the unit in the melee, how the battle unfolds, all that stuff. Of course, balance changes do apply, but still. Well, they are, by the way, roughly the same cost, I might add. Roughly the same stats. I kind of feel like Warriors of Cash should win, but, well, I got that char lovely charge against them. So I may end up being the winner over here. No, no, don't necessarily count on that, I just lost my general. Formation is still being fairly cohesive over there. Yeah, get screwed, my dude. Their general is dead. Oh, are we winning? <laughs> Alright, so the formation is... Like they're trying to keep it cohesive over here. Who will win? They come out on top, largely because of the charge. Probably could have put the AI on the attacker. Would have been interesting to see that result. But a fairly cohesive line of contact between both of them. Okay, so Warhammer free. Same units, same situation. Rebalancing, keep in mind, different AI behavior. But let's see how this unfolds. I wonder if they're gonna counter charge me here. They should. I might add. Yep. So one of the things people don't talk about enough is like, oh Warhammer 2 is better than Warhammer 3. It's like not in terms of the AI, I can tell you that much. Cause it's like in Warhammer 2, just because I put the AI as the defender, they didn't charge her. I mean, there's pros and cons with both both approaches, but in this situation, you generally want to do it. So, still a solid formation from both units. And we're gonna end up dying quicker here. They're going down. Oh yeah, they are certainly dying quicker. <laughs> Jeez. Well, they kind of got nerfed, I think, in Warhammer 3 versus 2. Also, I'm pretty sure that even on normal battle difficulty, the AI gets melee benefits in 2 that doesn't get in 3. Bit of a difference. And there we go. Great swords defeat warriors of cash who with the uh, gray weapons in a pure melee fight. That was not the result I expected. So, some interesting changes there. Over there. But it's really a question of balancing between uh, units, balancing between games. What I do note is that in Warhammer 3, at least in melee, it's like the initial strike is the one that matters more. Th this heavily pushes towards, I guess, a meta that encourages charge. And this applies to both infantry and cavalry. The straight up battle is less impactful, whereas in Warhammer 2, I would note, it's not the initial charge that's so important for either cavalry or infantry. It's more so the follow-up and how you micro your units. What you think is better out of those, that's your prerogative. Certainly melee, I feel like the overall 
uh, playing with melee in a campaign in Warhammer 3 is certainly a lot better than Warhammer 2. That doesn't mean the combat itself, like the moment-to-moment -moment combat. And, you know, this is just one universe versus another. Like, an actual battle is a gigantic clusterfuck in these games. Though I would probably say, like, a gigantic battle ends up being a bigger mess in, in uh, 3 than 2. Because units snag on each other, they can't follow up. That's kind of one of the problems, like just responsiveness, if you will. Anyway, Quasinier signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.